now it's time for the Coach McFerrin TV show. Presented by Chick-fil-A. Eat more chicken. The show is also supported by AutoZone. From parts to helpful advice, AutoZone has everything you need to get in the zone. AutoZone. Subway. Make it what you want. The Tennessee Lottery. And your Memphis Toyota dealers. Toyota. Let's go places. Welcome in, everybody. Nice to have you on board today. The Lady Tigers now 10 and 8. And at this point in the season, I know this was a week where you went 1 and 2, but one of those was a UConn game that I think sort of established, Coach, where you really are. This is a young basketball team that is really probably in the position you would have wanted them to be. Absolutely. And I think as we go into our conference season, we knew those first 10 days, those first four games were very challenging. We come out of that. I think our kids have a better understanding of what it takes to play at this level. Remember, we still have six kids who are in their first year of Division One basketball, mm -hmm. um, including significant number of freshmen. Right now, as we get into the conference, we know the scouts are better. We know that the scores are going to come down. I'm really pleased with our rebounding. We all agree that our, um, that our defense can still be better. Um, we're shooting the ball fairly well, got to work on our free throws. But uh, overall, if we can keep our emotions where it should be, I like our chances down the stretch. Your, your last game out was uh, a win. And, and I know you're, you're happy about the SMU game, especially the way you came back and, and won that ball game. But I think most people want to talk about UConn. That is a loss, but that was the closest that any team this year has ever been to UConn. If my memory serves me right, it's the closest you have ever been to playing UConn on a level playing field here. You could have won the game. You got Geno, so Maddie's tossing his water bottle. <laughs> Well, I tell our players at the end of the day, it's still a loss, so we don't want to overplay how well we played. But we did play well. And other than a last-second shot going into the half, we would have held the lead at halftime. That doesn't happen very often. Nobody in our league has ever beaten UConn. We were the team, um, one of two or three teams that have, have even played them close in the conference. Um, but when we got to the third quarter, we gave up three straight-line drives. We had three turnovers, and then, of course, we missed a couple layups late. That really could have been the difference in the game. But again, it's yeah. a game where the margins are small. Shows me a heck of a lot of progress, that is for sure. Here's what's coming up on the Melissa TV show. We're going to take a look at three different games. You'll get all the recaps. It was a one and two week, but it was really a, a good portion of the season. A little bit uh, after that, we've got the Chick-fil-A Player of the Week. You'll love that little segment inside access you're going to meet a young lady who is going to become the best sharpshooter in the history of the school and then we got a couple of games on the auto zone road ahead sit back relax plenty more to come on the melissa mcferrin tv show You're watching the Coach McFerrin TV show. Welcome back in again. And uh, we were talking about how much progress is being made with this very young team. And you do point out so many young young ladies that are just learning the college game. And I'm, it's fun to watch them come together. Well, they have the heart of a winner. And I think that, to me, is the most important thing. Our kids like to compete. I think they really want to win. Uh, they don't always know how to do that yet. But I do, I trust this team's core and I trust the kids on this team. We make, we learn a few more lessons and I think we've got a really good chance. Well, your first lesson has to be how to win on the road. So you've got to go down to New Orleans. That's always a little bit of a distraction. And uh, you, you've got to take on a, a Tulane team. And uh, in, in this ball game, it, it is close the whole way. Tulane is now 6-0 um, and in our conference. Um, they are leading uh, with UConn. Um, this is a team that is always difficult because they play a zone defense, they're going to play for 40 minutes, and they really make you figure things out. We didn't do a great job in the first half. Uh, also, our ball screen defense wasn't great in the first half, but in the second half, 
we figured some things out and, and had a shot at, at the very end. Came away with it, this was a tough loss. We were very invested in this game, and I thought we played really well in the second half, but we just had a margin at halftime that we couldn't quite overcome. We were right there, couldn't quite overcome it. That's the story of young teams, isn't it? Well, it is. It is. Uh, we're going to talk about a story later in the show where we actually do, but um, th that is one of the challenges, and for our players to understand that maybe we lost this game in the first half. Um, and those small mistakes that, you know, for instance, I mentioned our ball screen defense. You know, well, I missed a shooter. Well, I messed up ball screen defense. What's the big deal, Coach? Well, it kind of is, because sometimes you can't overcome those margins. We saw inside Williams, the freshman who was heralded coming in. Talk about her progress. Oh, he's just making progress, leaps and bounds. Um, hurt early in the year, and of course, that set her back a little bit. We're asking her to play two positions. That's difficult, but we're starting to see her gain some confidence put the ball on the floor, and um, you know, mid-post jumper. We're just really excited about her future. And so there's one in the book. So you go down to New Orleans and you play close. You just couldn't get over the hump. Only by four, though. Only by four. Um, and again, Tulane might end up being a better team than we even thought going into the game. They're leading the league right now, so we'll have to see how that plays out. All right, now you come back home, and here's Gino Ariyama. And the story, UConn program, they came in, they had lost a couple of games ago to Baylor at home, <laughs> but we know how good Baylor is. So you'd think they'd come out and they'd want to just run you off the court. You wouldn't let them do it. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm glad they had one game between that game <laughs> and us, uh, as any coach would say. I just really thought in this game, um, you know, Dulce, she was the best player on the floor in that game. Um, I thought so too. Bar none, she was the best player on the floor in that game. And I thought we did a great job, our team did a great job of mixing up defenses, keeping them off balance. You, but something that you're seeing right there was something that I mentioned earlier. We gave up a couple straight, straight yep. line drives that really were the difference um, in the game. But I thought our kids hung tough. We played with a tremendous amount of confidence. Kept the rebounding pretty, pretty even. And Dulcie just, she just went to work and then Madison Griggs was critical as well. Well, there is Dulcie uh, and she ended up with a double-double, her seventh this year. And did you think she would be quite as good as she is? Is this a surprise? No, it is not a surprise. We've been trying to get her here for three years because we knew this was the kind of player that she could be. The, probably the one thing that we didn't know was how badly she wants to be good. This is a kid that every day at the end of practice, bar none, spends at least another 30 or 45 minutes working on her game. That's the part about her that we didn't know for sure. Well, if you're a young lady at home and you watch that, know that work pays off. Do you realize her field goal percentage is 67%? She um, is in the top three or four in the conference in that. And um, we continue to find more ways to get her to the basketball. Of course, the double teams are coming. Um, but our kids are now learning. Again, we talk about a young team. We've got to learn how to feed the ball down the middle of the floor and uh, we got to learn how to cut around her. And that, that was probably the last time we'll see G Gino Ariyama in the El Marone Fieldhouse, fifth and final time. Any, any words of wisdom he said as you parted ways? Uh, no, I'm sure he'll have more to say about us once he leaves our conference and he can't be held accountable for some of the things he's gonna say. <laughs> I didn't know he could be held accountable anyway. So then, now it's 0-2 for this little uh, bit of your schedule, but you're gonna come back and you've got SMU, and boy, you guys made this a nail-biter. Well, uh, it was a W, and that's <laughs> what counts at the end. And, and I mentioned this two other times. Every game in the conference is going to be like this. There is not much difference between, I'm going to say, number 10 in our conference and number three. It's really tight this year, and I think you're going to see that. And there is one or two or three plays in every game that's, that's going to make the difference, in my opinion, and th that was certainly the case in this game. Well, she makes a difference, that's for sure. That She's already got the freshman record for shooting threes. You are a tough team. That's what I love. And, and that's really sort of been the staple of your ball clubs throughout your tenure here. But a 17-4 run to beat SMU for the first time since 2012, that's, that's big for me. It is. And, and this was a game, in addition to Madison Griggs, that I thought we saw the reemergence of Jamira Schutz. Um, for whatever reason, sophomore season, more attention on her. We haven't, she hasn't quite 
quite gotten on track this year. Um, Dulce had a subpar game in this game. Jamira Shoes came through in the end. I think she scored eight of our last nine. But having Madison Griggs that can light one up, she hit a three late. So did Ariel Wilson. And uh, every game should be tough, and we need, to, we need to bring that into the game. Your timing impeccable because you will get to meet Madison Griggs when we come back to the Melissa TV show. You're watching the Coach McFerrin TV show. We talked a little bit earlier about this young lady from the Memphis area who is just amazing. Madison Griggs is her name. She already owns the freshman three-point record. She's on her way to shattering the three-point record for a single season. And she sat down with the voice of the women's program, Tyler Springs. Maddie, I know Memphis is a basketball crazy town. You made the decision as someone being from here that this was the place that you wanted to be. What went into your thought process to stay in Memphis and to play for the University of Memphis? Um, well, my family's here, and uh, so I want to stay close to home. And uh, the coaches, they showed me a lot of love. So it was a great opportunity for me to stay home and um, just um, have my hometown come out and see me out, see me play. So, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a good decision for me. When you say the coaches show you love, what does that look like to you as as a recruit? Because I know there are different coaches with different programs trying to get in contact with you, trying to convince you, hey, this is where you need to be. Um, I mean, they usually like just call or text me a lot. It, I mean, it was kind of annoying, but they was there for me. They was they've been there for me since uh, my freshman year of high school. So uh, you know, I just love how they just kept trying to uh, come at me and uh, just trying to uh, keep talking to me. So I mean, that was a little, they kept showing me love and uh, kept taking me out on a um, visit. So I came up here anytime I wanted to to come see him. I mean, it was really close. But yeah, we just uh, talked every day and uh, yeah, went out and stuff, so it was nice. You've known the Williams sisters since middle school. How comfortable is it for you to have them here and, and just how far back does your relationship with them go? Um, uh, they, it was very comfortable when I first came here because they, um, I mean, I knew them already, so I, like they gave me uh, to be, they made me more comfortable to be around everybody because like I already knew them and I knew how to talk to them. So like it just made me get to know everybody else because I can show how I acted around people. So you've got a lot of guards to learn from who are older than you as well. Mm -hmm. You take Jazz, you take Jamira, both veteran players. What have you been able to pick up playing with them and playing against them as well as you develop as a freshman? Um, just to get tougher, you know. You have to be uh, tough and strong at this level, so you can't be weak and let everybody throw you around. So uh, just being tougher, that's what I learned from them. So, yeah. You seem confident. You played a lot as a freshman. How much does your confidence play into your ability to just hold your own against very high level of competition? Uh, my confidence level is pretty high right now because I'm uh, knocking down shots and I'm happy that they are not uh, falling. But uh, I try to remain humble every day. So, uh, so I can keep doing what I'm doing and just keep working, keep shooting every day. So, um, yeah, my confidence level is very high right now, but uh, I, I just try to remain humble and keep doing what I'm doing so we can win more games. What are your goals like for yourself as a freshman? Um, just do as much as I can for the team uh, to help us win, to uh, help us get to where we need to go. So uh, nothing more, just stay focused and um, stay out of trouble and uh, just do whatever I need, my team needs me to do. What do you think the ceiling is for this team? What do you think the possibilities are for places they can go? Uh, this season, uh, I feel like the sky's the limit. I know our record is, isn't the way how we play, but uh, we should, we gonna, we're gonna make it up still because we're still in conference play. So we're at the beginning, so we still have time to make up our record. But um, yeah, we're way better than our record. So I think, um, we can do way better and go farther as far um, postseason. So. And in terms of what you're doing off the court, what's it like for you trying to figure out what you want to study? Um, um, I'm headed towards sports medicine around there. So uh, I'm trying to get around anatomy 
in nutrition. I'm taking nutrition this year, uh, this semester. So um, I'm just trying at first. Probably my um, next major will probably be around psychology, but maybe some around there. So yeah, that's what I'm really figuring out right now. So thank you so much for the time, Maddie. Thank you for having me. Wow, she is as ambitious in her studies as she is at shooting the basketball. That's, that's really something. You know what I loved about that? She said, I just try to stay humble, and that's who she is. She shows up every day like that, and she'll say, Coach, yeah, I'm going to take my shots, but I also want to work on my defense. And she's just a kid that you know what you're going to get every day, and we're so glad we have her. Time for the Chick-fil-A best player of the week, and that would be, well, Guess what? It's Dulce. Nine points, ten rebounds against Tulane. Twenty-one and ten against UConn. That double-double. Seven and four against SMU. She's a near double-double machine, and that's what we expected. Um, and as I said before, she doesn't she doesn't shortchange work at all. Um, she's another player who's very humble. If she ever plays poorly, which hasn't happened very often this year, she says, "Coach, I'm going to do better next game." And. Uh, yeah, we're glad we have her for another year and a half. I bet you are. We'll take a time out when we come back. You'll watch Coach at work. Stick around. You're watching the Coach McFerrin TV show. Time for a little Toyota Inside Access. Let's watch Coach do her thing. I am going to say great effort. Um, let's keep that rolling, okay? And let's bring that mentality that I want to win into our practice every day. Come on, Jamara! Come on, Jamara! You got to run harder! <laughs> Ladies, I keep saying hit the line and cut in. Everybody watch. Hit the line and cut in. Hit the line and shorten the pass, okay? Good. That's it, good, good. Use your left hand, Maddie. We're not working on right-handed layups on the left side. Here we go. Good. Good. Guards, you gotta wait till the post player gets here, okay? Because you gotta read high side defense. Guard is driving, you're feeding the post player right here. You're not driving. Stay square, good. Net a seal. Make sure you seal. You gotta seal. Good. Nice, Kiki. Kiki, way to stay high. Good. Arm bar. Dulce, they turn their back. Get your arm bar going. Get your arm bar going if they turn their back. Good. 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 Challenge yourself on the closeout. Challenge yourself on the closeout. We got to guard this. Good, Elena. Good, Elena. Play. Stay on it. Stay on it, Kiki. Don't leave. Don't leave. Good, 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 good. Nice. That's a good job, Kiki. We needed that. Last minute of the game. We got to have a great last minute. Everybody doing their job. Good, good. Good, G. Good job, White. Tigers on three. One, two, three. Tigers. Always teaching. Oh, I love it. The AutoZone Road Ahead is two games coming up. Stick around on the Melissa TV Show. You're watching the Coach McFerrin TV Show. A busy AutoZone road ahead. We'll start on the road. Memphis will play against East Carolina on the 28th and then back home on the 1st against Tulsa. It'll be good to see you guys at the Elmerone Fieldhouse. It'll be a special day. Wear pink. 
It's our Play for K National Initiative for Women's Basketball for the Awareness of Breast Cancer. I can't wait to uh, be a part of that, that is for sure. Folks, have a great week. We'll see you the next time. Thanks for watching the Coach McFerrin TV show presented by Chick-fil-A. Eat more chicken. The show is also supported by AutoZone. For parts to helpful advice, AutoZone has everything you need to get in the zone. AutoZone, Subway, make it what you want. The Tennessee Lottery and your Memphis Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield IMG College. Under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Memphis, the use of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the University of Memphis and Learfield IMG College. The preceding has been a Learfield IMG College presentation of the Tiger Sports Network.